I have a character and I can move it left and right and up and down one grid cell at a time and it can only move onto a blank space. It cannot move onto wall tiles here. And I want to move it from here to all the way over here. To do that, I need to find a list of grid cells that I can move through one at a time to get a path to that location. Like so. So to do that, in this case, I'm using something called the breadth first search algorithm. Now here's a visual example of how this code works. If I click here, you can see it gradually floods out in sort of an expanding circle. And with each grid cell it checks, it keeps track of its previous position here. And then once it reaches its goal position, it can then just walk backwards um, to get the path to the player from the goal position. So here's how the code works. So you have this queue or linked list, uh, which is a first in first out structure, and that's gonna keep track of all the grid cells we wanna check. And then we have this cache visited, which is a dictionary. It keeps track of all the cells we've already visited and what their last positions were. And then I have a constant here for the max number of cells we can check, the max iterations. And that's just so if we never find the goal position, it will still be able to end. It won't just run forever. So I run this code here, get path, and I pass in a start and goal position. And I just see if we can actually move to the goal position. If we can't, then just return a blank path. Then we want to make sure our queue and our caches are blank. And then we push our starting position onto the queue. Enter it in and we just put in the start position and our last position will be null. Then uh, we have a variable for the number of iterations we run so far and then we start this loop. So basically while there are cells to check in our queue then we run this code and so we pop the first entry off of the queue, whatever's at the front, which is our starting position we pushed in. And we run this check cell code on it and we just get its position, last position, our goal position passed in there. In this check cell, what we do is we just check can we move to the spot we passed in. And if we can't, return false. If we've already visited this position, return false, don't do anything. Um, if we haven't visited it, then we add that position to our visited cache and we pass in its last position as well to remember. And then we check is this position our goal position? If it is, then we return true. We found the end position. Otherwise, most likely what's going to happen is it's going to go here and it's going to push the four adjacent cells onto the queue. So it puts them at the back of the queue and it passes in our current position as the uh, last position for those. Then returns false. So back here um, in our check cell code, if we haven't reached the goal, then we add one iteration on. If we've reached our max, then just return a blank path. Then it just keeps running this and you can see it just keeps adding adding on adjacent cells. So if it's a wall, it just returns and that gets removed from the front of the queue. And that'll lead to that. This just makes that basic flood fill behavior where it just adds on the gradually surrounding more and more adjacent cells one at a time. Now, once we've reached our goal position, we return true. It breaks out of this loop and it goes in here where it takes our goal position and it just puts it in this variable. And it just checks while this position is in our visited cache. We can just run through and get its last position and add this current position to our path just dependent to that list. And so it just keeps running through until the last position is null, which means there aren't any more previous positions. And we found the whole path, but it's backwards, so we just flip it and then we have the final path. So this algorithm is really good for finding the shortest path to a point, but it has a big downside in that it gets exponentially slower the farther away the goal position is. So it's not great for super big maps, but there is a really cool optimization you can do with this algorithm. Let's say you have a game with hordes of zombies, like thousands, and they're all chasing the player. So instead of calculating a path from every zombie to the player, you can instead use breadth first search to do this sort of flood fill out um, once every time the player moves and then you'll have a path from every position on the map to the player so that way no matter how many zombies are on the map your pathfinding code will always take the same amount of time to run since each zombie can just reference that cache to figure out how to get to the player.